You know, most days I really like doing these reviews and some days I really like doing these reviews. And those days are usually when I get my hands on something new that ticks boxes I didn't even know there were boxes for. This week's gun is just one of those guns. I think at this point I should say, spoiler alert, this is the AGT Vixen and I'm keeping it. Why? Watch on. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This week it's going to be an awesome Love at First Hold AGT Vixen and it's definitely a keeper. The difficulty here is where do I start because you've already had the conclusion and it's not likely to change as the review goes on. Well I suppose I should start with where I started with it so to speak. It was one of those Saturdays when I decided to take time out from the immense task of trying to renovate our new home and drop into Vector Air to see the guys and take in some air gun time. Within minutes of getting there, Carl thrust this vixen into my hands and said, try this. Well, and it was love at first hold. It is one of those guns where images don't do it full justice. You need to hold it, feel it. It is super light and so comfortable with everything exactly where I'd want it to be. With options to personalise and quality engineering. I could go on, but let's get down to the walk around and give you some of the facts and figures and get on with the review really, shall we? It is from the guys who gave us the Uragan and is available in two lengths in sub 12 foot pounds and FAC power levels and is available in 177 and 22 calibers. For today's review, I have a brace of them. Short, long, 177, 22, sub 12 and FAC. Talk about a kid in a sweet shop. The short version weighs in at a carry around all day 4.6 pounds or 2.1 kilograms with the long being just slightly heavier at 5 pounds or 2.3 kilograms unscoped. The short version is 770 millimeters in length with the long being 920 millimeters which instantly gives you the tool for whatever job you want be that target work or pest control either way this is so light you barely know you're carrying it now i don't do box opening videos but i do want to show you what comes in the box with each gun because they haven't cut any corners in what you're supplied with it comes with a really high quality bag really nicely padded and yes it will still fit in the bag with a scope and it's not just a gimmick bag that is totally useless after you set up your gun there is also a branded and logoed box containing two high quality metal magazines a fill probe and an attachment for your air tank or bottle. The usual couple of spare o-rings and a rather useful vernier pen which hints at the company's focus on engineering which is a nice touch. Oh and there's a key ring. Back to the walk around. It is unmistakably military style in its all black finish with a carbon bottle forming the rear stock. The first thing visually that hits you is that front shroud or suppressor. Oh my matron, what a big one. This is exaggerated on the long version and damn does it look like it means business. It does make it difficult to add any additional silencer if for some reason you had the urge. But I can't see why you would because it is really quiet enough for anyone. And using it for a spot of pest control, I was able to take out more than one shot at pests without them scattering. Mmm. 
The shroud hides this gun's highly desirable hammer-forged CZ barrel, a barrel known for its accuracy, so I'm expecting big things in the target work later. The lengths of the barrel are 400mm in the long version and 250mm in the short version. These figures then transpose over to the gun to show that oversized shroud and it will help also have a length of sound deadening silencer at the end. It's worth noting that this is definitely one of those guns that's quieter when firing a pellet than when dry firing, surprisingly so. Moving back down the gun, we come to the foregrip rail, which is a light, more plastic item, but I believe there is a billeted alloy version available in short or long for the guys who like to customise their guns. Below and incorporated into this is a Picatinny or Weaver rail for such things as torch, lasers, bipods, etc. But in this case, you can use the optional spare magazine holder, which is done in a design that suits the gun and can double up as a foregrip or rest. Talking about rails, the top has a Picatinny rail for your scope and is easily long enough to be able to fit most scopes and individual sighting needs. Just to test it out, I added a smaller scope in the form of a Veyron compact scope to the shorter version and a Taurus to the longer version. They both suit either gun, but the smaller Veyron is slightly lighter and complements the lightness of these guns and would probably be my choice. There are no issues with scopes getting in the way of the magazines or the action because both are well clear of the rail. The finish to the main block is beautifully engineered and when the magazine is loaded into the block, fitment is completely symmetrical. which does show their attention to detail. The side lever cocking arm is fitted to the left hand side and is super smooth in its action and it is fully transferable over from its current position on the left over to the right if preferred, making this truly ambidextrous. The safety is below this and is perfectly positioned for you to be able to carry this gun around in safe mode with your finger away from the trigger, but is instantly switchable to fire with your trigger finger ready to take that shot. It is sure and crisp with a red dot indicator on the left hand side to show you you're in fire mode. This can easily be dropped back into safe with your thumb. Now I'll make a big thing about safeties on guns, but I have not found one quite as accessible for me before. And I found myself constantly aware and using it continuously with a real feel of security. The trigger is quite broad and fully adjustable, but I found it to be about perfect for me straight out of the box. The grip is a pistol AR type grip and is really quite comfortable. It has a removable bottom for storage, as is often the case with this type of grip. Moving back, we come to the filler port and the manometer. Beyond this, we come to the beautiful 250cc carbon tank, which doubles up as the butt stock and has a quality adjustable butt pad on the end, which I found to be more comfortable with this adjusted down for me to line up with the scope better. I also found it very comfortable as a resting point with that neoprene wrap around the bottle. There are a lot of modern guns out there who follow the military style and seem to forget to give you a comfortable resting cheek position with square shapes and coal metal and it really does take something away from the overall finish to my mind. No such problem here. 
The one thing to just highlight whilst I'm around this area is the filling of this Vixen. I said earlier they supply a bottle filler setup. Well, one of the reasons they do this is maybe because it will fill to a maximum pressure of 300 bar. Yes, you heard correctly. 300 bar which kind of does away with the need for a gauge on your bottle to a certain extent because you can simply pop it in and max out if you want to this is going to increase the shot count available which of course is going to be entirely power dependent this pressure and capacity, coupled with the highly efficient regulator built into this, you have the ability to squeeze as many shots as you are likely to get from a 250cc bottle. Next, let's look at that magazine and filling this up with air, shall we? The magazines are again really well made, predominantly out of alloy, with a rotating centre. The 177 holds 15 rounds and the 22 holds 12 rounds. To load these up, simply turn the internal dial through around 10 minutes, drop in your pellet f uh, f head first, rotate and turn it into the next one. The reason that you're moving it slightly off the centre of the gap is to prevent them falling all the way through. Although simply putting your finger there also helps to make sure it doesn't happen. But once you've got so many pellets in, it holds it and locks it into position. It's a very simple, efficient system. Dead easy to use. Once you've got them all loaded up, simply pull back on the side lever and drop into the gun from the right hand side and you're all ready to go. Then you need to fill it with air into the filler port which is located to the rear as stated earlier. You can of course take this up to the maximum on your bottle unless of course you have some scary higher than 300 bar bottle or filling system. I have a tendency to run this up to around 250 bar and found I was getting loads of shots even from the FAC version. I was probably eating through around five to six magazines worth of 2.2 before I needed to think about refilling. Taking it up to the 300 bar fill pressure will give you considerably more shots. Carl at Vector Air has been tweaking the regulator and has seen over 150 shots from the sub 12 foot pound Vixen. Now in many respects you could simply stop there and be totally happy and convinced by these guns. But then we need to actually put it to the test. Firstly I wanted to check out the power levels as usual. I was using several different pellets but settled on some 10.34 grains in this 177 sub 12 foot pound version and over the chrono it saw a healthy 720 feet per second which equates to 11.91 foot pounds or 16.14 joules which is as close as you'd really want to be. The FAC longer barrel version was loaded up with the new 0.22 JSB redesigns, which are 25.3 grains, and it was showing 735 feet per second, which was 30.36 foot pounds or 41.16 joules. And I'm reliably informed it doesn't necessarily need to stop there. Now, it was giving you the same flatter trajectory as a 177 sub 12. But of course, with stopping power to sort out most any pests, you may need sorting. The regulator does an excellent job and keeps the feet per second spread very tight and in single figures. So tight, in fact, that Vector Air had a customer thinking his chronograph was faulty because it just kept giving the same consistent reading. With really healthy figures like these, I think it's time to zero these scopes in and get out for some target work to test the CZ barrels and the effectiveness of the regulators. Here goes.
I would love to take the credit for that work, but it's time to fess up a little here. It was actually shot by Keith, a friend of mine who was passing on the day I was filming. But it was just as I thought, excellent out at 40 metres in either calibre. But that higher power in a 2.2 does help the heavier, higher calibre match the flight characteristics of the lighter 177. Or maybe it's that longer barrel. When I quizzed Keith, he put a lot of emphasis on the difference in the trigger between the two, which is of course adjustable, and time and patience would bring them into line with each other. 8.44 grains were used in the 177, and the heavier redesigned JSBs in the 2.2. I also realised that the target work and testing of these two could go into a full program of its own with different weight pellets, different distances for the power levels, different barrel length results, and of course, the possible inclusion of slugs into the FAC version. Now, I am more than happy to do this at a future date if the interest in such a video is out there. Just let me know. But we did stretch the FAC out to 60 yards and dropped in some Barracuda 18s for good measure. Pretty good if you ask me, and we were both happy with those results. He even had his first kill as a fly walked across the target. Let's just say it won't be having children anytime soon. For now though, both of these are really accurate and capable of outshooting most people, and are one of those guns you just want to keep experimenting with, and before you know where you are, there's half a day gone, or even more. It seems strange to come to a conclusion at this point, because that was given right at the start of this week's programme. But I stand by it, because it is very light, easy to pick up, and feels really comfortable instantly. I'm, it's a really capable tool that has been well made, well designed, nicely finished. It's adaptable and able to be personalised to suit the individual shooter and it is a quality item that sits right in there with the big boys and yet leaves you enough change to be able to buy a decent scope. I say scope because the quality bag is already included. Something you don't get with those other high-end manufacturers. The price? Well, this is a brand new gun and should retail out at about £1,500 UK. But Vector are running this at an introductory price currently, which I believe is a lot less than that. At this price level, it's not for everyone, I understand. But in that price category, it is considerably cheaper than most of the others that are in there, and easily as good, if not even better than a few of them, in my experience. Most of you probably won't have heard of the Vixen, but some of you will have heard of its sibling, the Uragan which is going to be reviewed very shortly. And if it comes anywhere close to the Vixen, is going to be another really enjoyable review. I'm looking forward to that one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's programme. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share, click the old alarm bell. Why not join in with all the forums and chats on all the links below? A big thank you, of course, to Mrs. AAR for managing the merchandise and most everything else, to be fair. And, of course, a big thank you to Vector Air for the loan of these guns, without whom this would be pretty much impossible. So thank you very much to those guys. Above all, though, thank you to you for watching. Just leaves me to say, beautiful day. Stay safe 
and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.